thank you for watching today. Welcome to my channel, Your True Shelf. My name is Sarah, and today I'm going to do a TBR of books that I would like to read over the summer. So I um, don't need any more introduction than that, really, so I'll just crack on and show you the books. So I recently did a video about books that I've been avoiding from my TBR, so I thought that I should have at least one of those books on my summer TBR because if I don't get to them at some point, there's really no point in keeping them. So the one that I picked off that list was this one. Sacred Hearts by Sarah Donant. So this is set in Italy in 1570 and it's about a girl called Serafina who um, she's taken from her family and she's placed in a convent and she has the gift of a beautiful singing voice but because she's been placed in the convent against her will she refuses to sing. So this is her story um, and it sounds really uh, intriguing and as I said in my in my previous video about books I've been avoiding, I'm not really sure why I'm avoiding it. So um, I'd like to put it on my list for the summer. I like reading books when it's warm and hot in this country um, that are set in a similar sort of climate. Um, I find it really difficult to read books that are sort of autumnal or snowy and things um, when it's in the summer. But so that's why I picked this one. So the next book I want to read this summer is Elmet by Fiona Mosley and this was long listed for the Women's Prize and the reason that I want to read this one over the summer is because one of my friends from work has lent this to me and um, this is about a boy called Daniel um, it says, it sounds a bit creepy um, so it says the simplicity of his early life with Daddy and Kathy has turned sour and fearful they lived apart in the house that Daddy built for them with his bare hands they foraged and hunted when they were younger Daddy and Kathy had gone to school but they were not like the other children then, and they were even less like them now. Sometimes Daddy disappeared and would return with a rage in his eyes. But when he was at home, he was at peace. He told them the little cops and Elmet was theirs alone. But that wasn't true. Local men, greedy and watchful, began to circle like vultures. All the while, the terrible violence in Daddy grew. So this sounds quite creepy and quite scary, and this contradicts what I just said about reading things set in the summer. But I do love I do love um, books set in forests because I am a bit obsessed with forests. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this one. So next on my list is Sing on Berry Sing, which was from the shortlist of the Women's Prize this year. There's been lots and lots and lots of talk and massive praise for this book, and I didn't manage to read it before the um, the winner of the Women's Prize was announced. It didn't win, but I'm still really looking forward to to reading it this summer and. Um, I'll get to this one really soon because I don't want to wait for it much longer. Here's Nutshell by Ian McEwan. I've got quite a lot of Ian McEwan's books and I actually met him um, when he came to um, UEA, which is our local university, to give a talk. Um, he is linked with UEA through the creative writing degree and um, yeah, so he's um, signed some of his books for me, which was pretty amazing. Um, he hasn't signed this one, and this is one of his newer ones. Um, so it says, Trudy has betrayed her husband John. She's still in the marital home, a dilapidated, priceless London townhouse, but John's not here. Instead, she's with his brother, the profoundly banal Claude, and the two of them have a plan. But there is a witness to their plot, the inquisitive nine-month-old resident of Tru Trudy's womb. So that sounds pretty intriguing. So the next book that I'd like to read this summer is... Um, this Must Be The Place by Maggie O'Farrell and I've heard so much praise for Maggie O'Farrell from Simon of Savage Reads and from um, Jen Campbell and um, I really want to read this and confession time I've never actually read anything by Maggie O'Farrell so when this book came out and I heard so much um, praise about it I, um, I picked it up for myself. Interestingly, I also bought a copy for one of my best friends and she hated it. <laughs> so we normally have quite similar taste in books. So um, I guess that put me off for this well. But I'm looking forward to um, to giving it a try. Um, so it says, um, a, reclu a reclusive former film star living in the wilds of Ireland, Claudette Wells thinks nothing of firing a gun if strangers get too close to her house. Why is she so fiercely protective of her privacy and what made her disappear at the height of her cinematic fame? Her husband, Daniel... Reading from a discovery about a woman he last saw 20 years ago is about to make an exit of his own. It is a journey that will send him off course far from home. Will his love for Claudette be enough to bring him back? So, um, sounds good. 
The next one I'd like to get to over the summer is The Marriage Plot by Jeffrey Eugenides. Uh, I've never read anything by him, but I've also heard um, a lot of good things about him, especially from um, Michael Kindness from Books on the Nightstand. And um, I am intrigued to read this. I found this in a secondhand bookshop when we were on holiday in Matlock. And um, this is about, um, about uh, a love story between um, three people um, set in the 1980s on a campus. So um, I do like, quite, quite like a campus novel and so I'm um, looking forward to reading this one. It'll be nice to read something from an author that I haven't read before but that I've heard quite a lot of good things about. Next on the list is Days Without End by Sebastian Barry which I bought a while ago and I'm really looking forward to reading. This one was the cost of book of the year 2016 and it is a love story um, between two men in the army in 1850s America and um, it seems like they're facing extreme hardships in the war and it says there's an Indian girl who, um, who crosses their path and so she becomes involved in the story as well. And I'm interested in this period of time and I am interested in the story between the two men. And I've heard really good things about this. I don't know why it's taken me so long to get to it. And um, so this is one of my choices for the summer. Next we have... Um, Ian Banks, um, A Song of Stone. So I've never read anything by Ian Banks. Again, another feels like a, that's a bit of a confession. Um, I know Ian Banks um, writes also science fiction under the name of Ian M. Banks and um, never read any Ian M. Banks books either. Uh, my friend bought me this for a present a couple of birthdays ago and haven't read it yet. It sounds quite different. Um, so it says, the war is ending, perhaps ended. For the castle and its occupants, the troubles are just beginning. Armed gangs roam its lawless land, where each farm and house supports a column of dark smoke. Taking the roads with the other refugees, anonymous in their raggedness, seems safer than remaining in the ancient keep. But the lieutenant of an outlaw band has another idea, and the castle becomes the focus for a dangerous game of desire, deceit and death. So it sounds quite... Um, sort of otherworldly, dystopian, doesn't really say what time period it's set in, but I think it's something that is completely different from the things I would usually read, um, and therefore it'll be nice to sort of expand my horizons and to give it a go, and to see whether Ian Banks is my cup of tea. So, penultimate choice is this one, um, When God Was a Rabbit by Sarah Women. So I read Tim Mann um, last month, I think it was, and it was one of the most wonderful, beautiful gorgeous books I've ever read um, and so when I was in the library last time I saw this um, on display and I thought well definitely need to borrow it because if it's anything like as good as Tim Man then it'll be brilliant um, it's about um, it says it's about brother and sister a book about childhood and growing up friendships and families triumph and tragedy and everything in between more than anything it's about love in all its forms so it's quite nice it doesn't actually really tell you too much about the book there's no um, there's no spoilers there, which is which is nice. Uh, this one I'll be getting to fairly soon because it's a library book. And then last but not least, we have some non-fiction, um, which is The Butchering Art, which was listed for the Welcome Prize this year by Lindsay Fitzharris. Um, again, I'll be getting to this one fairly soon because uh, my friend from work has lent me this book as well. And uh, this is a, a non-fiction book. It's about Victorian operating theatres and about how they they were pretty gruesome places where the surgeons didn't wash their hands between operations, they didn't even wash the instruments, um, and how the death rates went up when um, anaesthesia was discovered because the surgeons would become more daring in their practices. And they didn't know about bacteria, they didn't know about washing their hands and how that would save so many lives. So um, it's about the story of how um, Joseph Lister um discovers um germs basically and he tries to bring in practices of hygiene and it's about how people thought that he was um you know he didn't know what he was talking about and they didn't want to you know trust what he was saying and obviously um he turned out to sort of revolutionize um medicine in the way we know it now so that should be really interesting apparently it's quite grisly and gruesome um so uh we'll see how that goes down so that's my TBR list for the summer. Um, I'll be interested to know if any of you have read any of those books and what you made of them, if so. Um, it'll be interesting to see how many of them I actually read this summer, how many of them um, get uh, superseded by other new purchases, for instance. 
Um, so I will report back and I'll be back soon with my wrap up for June with the books that I've read and reviewed. Um, comment down below, give me a like or a subscription if you're enjoying my videos and I will speak to you soon. Bye!